Hey everyone, welcome to The Drive Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Atia. Peter, welcome to another AMA. How you doing? Doing very well. Excited to talk about this stuff today. Awesome. I don't know if you noticed, but I saw your Instagram post today on Maui Nui Venison, so I wore my Axis Deer Institute shirt. I, I wondered if that was a coincidence, but uh, was not. The accidental experts. <laughs> <laughs> Love that um, story. So for today's AMA, it's not going to be on exercise like the past two have been. We're going to kind of stick to that, although I'm sure some of what we'll talk about will tie in a little bit to exercise. But what we're going to do is we just kind of gathered a ton of questions all around basically body composition in one way or another. So we're going to start by looking at DEXA scans. Uh, this is a topic that has come up a lot in AMAs recently, especially the bone health AMA. And we've gotten a lot of feedback from listeners who they're like, hey, I went and got my DEX results. I'm trying to understand what they mean. How should I think about them? What matters, what doesn't? So we kind of compiled those and we're gonna do a deeper dive into that, including looking at some real life patient case studies. So what we had is the team pulled specific patients that you have and we thought were kind of good overarching like studies that kind of show people how they can think about this and then also what changes need to be made based on those results. So kind of not only how to understand the DEXA, but then how you apply that to your life. And then from there, we're going to do some follow-up questions that mainly came from the Strong Convictions Loosely Held podcast um, and really around your comments on protein consumption um, and really how you get as much protein in throughout the day as you want to. And then also some follow-up questions on your comments regarding your views on time-restricted feeding. So if it all goes to according to plan, we'll wrap all that, but I think it will all kind of fit together because I think a lot of what we'll talk about in the protein time-restricted feeding will play off what we learn in the DEXA. So with that said, anything you wanna add before we kind of jump into the first question? Nope, let's, uh, let's go for it. Perfect. So the first one, kind of just keep it simple. Just how should people interpret their DEXA scans? So when your patients do them and you do them and you look at the results, what do you care about? What are you looking at? And even what metrics are they providing that you don't care about? Well, you know, I think um, probably first I should explain what a DEXA scan is uh, for folks. So a DEXA scan is, is um, you know, it's, it's an x-ray basically. It's uh, sort of a moving x-ray. So you lay on a table and a really, really low powered x-ray, uh, so meaning very little ionizing radiation is sort of run across your body. And <clears throat> the way all x-rays work basically is there's a plate behind the, the, the object or the person being x-rayed and <clears throat> it's effectively looking at what's hitting the plate. And the more dense something is in front of the plate, the less uh, electrons that are going to hit the back of the plate. Now, there's a unit in radiation that we talk about, uh, and it's usually millisieverts. We talk about, um, you know, how many millisieverts of radiation something, uh, you, you know, offers you. And more radiation to some extent is is harmful and so the the nrc recommends that a person receive no more of 50 uh, millisieverts in a year in a calendar year now so the so the question is then how do you put that in, in context right so so just living at sea level is something to the tune of one to two millisieverts per year so just being exposed to the sun at sea level um and, and not just the sun, but of course, you know, everything that's ionizing, um, in the, uh, uh, in space, basically it exposes you to, you know, two, three, maybe 4% of your annual allotment. And that changes. So if you lived in Colorado, you know, where you're basically a mile above sea level, it's about twice that amount that you're getting. Um, but when you start to look at something like a flight, like what is an East coast to West coast flight? Well, that's a, that's, you know, it's a certain amount of radiation. It's not nearly as much as if you're going over the poles. Um, but now you have to measure those things in microsieverts. That's how much lower it is. So a flight would be like 40 microsieverts. And again, a microsievert is one one thousandth of a millisievert. Um, so what about a mammogram? So a mammogram would be about 400 microsieverts or 0. 0.4 
millisieverts, chest x-ray, depending on the size of the individual, maybe 25 to 50 micro sieverts. Conversely, a CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis could be up to 20 millisieverts, which would be about 40% of your annual allotment. So why am I saying all this? Well, I just want to put DEXA in context because it is a virtually radiation-free technology. It is insanely low. It's basically anywhere, um, well, I won't get into all the details of why, but it's typically less than 20 micro sieverts. That's, that's sort of the punchline. So a DEXA has no more radiation than even the lowest end of a chest X-ray. And we're talking about, you know, gosh, like 1 20th of the radiation of a mammogram and about half the radiation of a cross-country flight. Okay, so all of that is to say the DEXA is a really safe, low risk, uh, it, it's, it's a, you know, there, there's effectively zero risk to a DEXA scan. Um, and it's not something you need to do that often. Like, I mean, we, we have some patients when they come into the practice, they're ordering DEXA scans or they've been doing DEXA scans on themselves every six weeks. That's a total waste of time. So this is a type of scan that you would do once, maybe twice per year. It has the capacity to distinguish effectively three things, bone, fat, and other. Those are basically the three buckets that DEXA is uh, distinguishing based on the density of, uh, you know, what's, what's being, uh, what the electrons are going through. So when you do the scan, you basically get four pieces of information if you're looking closely at it. Now, again, when most people go and get a DEXA scan, they're kind of looking at one thing, which is what's my body fat. Um, and again, body fat can be calculated in two ways, but the probably the best way to do it is to take the total amount of fat and divide it by the total mass of the individual. And that gives you percent body fat. Technically, you can subtract out bone mass when you do that and get tissue fat percent. But, and by the way, that doesn't differ very much because bones don't weigh that much. Um, but just in case you're wondering where, the, where that discrepancy can be. So certainly body fat is a, a relevant consideration. We'll talk about it. Um, but I think there's three others that are more important. Um, and the first is actually BMD, bone mineral density. And um, that is both reported in an absolute amount in grams per centimeter squared. And it's also reported in a Z-score. Now, I think we, we probably covered a lot of this in the previous AMA on bone health. So I won't go into any more detail on that. The next thing that you get is an estimate of VAT or visceral adipose tissue. And um, again, I won't go into how this is done, but it is clearly just an estimate. And it's based on looking at the amount of fat that is in the torso above the anterior superior iliac crest and the ribs and kind of trying to subtract out what it believes is in the subcutaneous space and therefore looking at the difference. And as you'll see, visceral fat is a relatively small fraction of total body fat, but it's important to get that right because it's so much more indicative of risk. And the final thing that it gives you is, uh, sometimes it does this directly. It just tells you the appendicular lean mass index. And sometimes you just have to calculate it and you can always calculate the fat free mass index with both of which we'll talk about. So these are measures of how much lean mass you have or muscle mass in the extremities. And the way this is always reported is total amount of lean tissue divided by height in meters squared. So both appendicular lean mass index and fat-free mass index, which is just total mass that is not fat divided by height in meters squared. They're both reported therefore in kilograms per meter squared. So those are the four things you get when you do a DEXA. And of course, all of these things, you want to see how you stack up against a population. And that population is typically stratified by your sex and by your age. So therefore we have nomograms for each of these things and that's how we present the data to a patient. And that's how we therefore make decisions about, you know, where you rank and what you need to do. And so, so to clarify on that, so the bone mineral density, the VAT, AM, ALMI and FFMI, those are the four major things. And now I think I've heard you say before is, not every place you get a DEXA scan will give you those metrics, but every place 
will provide those met will provide the metrics you need to come to the conclusion of that for yourself. With one exception. So there are some DEXA places that only give total body Z score for bone and they don't break it out individually by hip and lumbar spine. This is important because, and I, again, I believe I spoke about this on the previous AMA, you can't make a diagnosis of osteopenia or osteoporosis, or frankly assess uh, BMD clinically without that feature. In other words, if you just look at total body BMD, the Z-score for the total body is, um, it's, it's too easy to mask what's going on in those areas. So doesn't mean you can't get a DEXA at one of those places. You can, but you just have to understand there's a blind spot, which is you're not getting adequate information about BMD. So if there's any concern about BMD, um, you're going to have to go to a, a place that is able to give the segmented information. Yeah, which is good for people to know just because as they're Googling different places and calling around, it gives them something specific to ask for to get a good understanding. Yeah. So on that, I think... What it makes sense to do next is dive into each of those four metrics a little more and kind of what they mean and why they're important. Um, with BMD, I, as you mentioned, we covered that in a BMD AMA, which was AMA 37. For anyone who hasn't listened to it and wants to go back and listen, I don't think we really need to dive into that in as much detail uh, just based on that AMA. But the VAT, ALMI, and FFMI, I think might be worth getting into, because I think those are metrics that most people aren't hearing about, where body fat percentage, I think everyone is aware of that. They conceptually know what that is. But the other three, I think for people not in the space, it's a little outside of their understanding. Thank you for listening to today's sneak peek AMA episode of The Drive. If you're interested in hearing the complete version of this AMA, you'll want to become a member. We created the membership program to bring you more in-depth, exclusive content without relying on paid ads. Membership benefits are many, and beyond the complete episodes of the AMA each month, they include the following. Ridiculously comprehensive podcast show notes that detail every topic, paper, person, and thing we discuss on each episode of The Drive. Access to our private podcast feed. The Qualies, which were a super short podcast, typically less than five minutes, released every Tuesday through Friday, which highlight the best questions, topics, and tactics discussed on previous episodes of The Drive. This is particularly important for those of you who haven't heard all of the back episodes. It becomes a great way to go back and filter and decide which ones you want to listen to in detail. Really steep discount codes for products I use and believe in, but for which I don't get paid to endorse and benefits that we continue to add over time. If you want to learn more and access these member-only benefits, head over to peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe. Lastly, if you're already a member, but you're hearing this, it means you haven't downloaded our member-only podcast feed where you can get the full access to the AMA and you don't have to listen to this. You can download that at peteratiamd.com forward slash members. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all with the ID Peter Atia MD. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast player you listen on. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. Mm -hmm.